Welcome back to CBS Sports HQ presented by the United States Marine Corps. Now we are exactly two weeks away from the NFL draft. It's expected that Caleb Williams will be drafted first overall. But after that, well, as you can see, every analyst has a very different take. Looking at Brady Quinn and Danny Cannell's top five here. I mean, at least they can agree on number one, right? Yeah, but I like chaos. <laughs> Don't we all? All right, Brady Quinn, Danny Cannell joining us now on HQ. Let the battle begin. We're going to start with that number <laughs> two pick, the 2024 NFL Draft. So, Brady, you have the Washington Commanders going with Jaden Daniels. Danny, you like Drake May. So, Danny, tell us why he's your number two. Maybe I'm stubborn, Jenny. I have had Drake May number two for about a year and a half, ever since I first started watching him play at North Carolina. I think, you know, there's a lot of people. He's kind of fallen this draft season as people have gone back and watched this past season. When if you go back and watch the season before, that's when he really garnered a lot of his attention. But he did have a new offensive coordinator, didn't have as many weapons around him. And I still think he's a very raw potential who still has a lot of upside left in him. And I think he's going to be perfect for an NFL team once he gets in there. There. And there's not much difference. I mean, all these quarterbacks, all three of them, I think are pretty close together, uh, matched up there. But I like Drake May's upside. I still think he's only played two years of football. I think he's an incredible competitor. He's a great athlete. He's not the runner that Jaden Daniels is. No one would confuse those two. But I think he's going to be great once he gets in a system, gets some development. I think the sky's the limit for Drake May. And I, I, I just think he's an innate thrower, a natural thrower of the football. And I, it's hard for me sometimes, too, to look at Jaden Daniels from where he came from at Arizona State and not feel like you've maximized a lot of that potential uh, in him. So I, I like Drake May slightly better than Jaden Jane Daniels. Well, I can't disagree anymore in regards to Jaden Daniels and what his upside is. I think he's gotten better and better and better since he first burst on the scene as a freshman in Tempe, Arizona. I think he showcased a lot of early on raw ability to impact the game with his legs and his arm. And he polished off this last season with maybe the best, really playing from the pocket. Now, obviously, he's elusive. He's dynamic as a runner. Uh, it's one of the reasons why he won the Heisman Trophy. But to me, there's a reason why I look at him as the number two quarterback in this draft class, because I still think there's that much more upside. And the odd thing to me, too, is everyone talks about his, his you know, frame and the concern about you know, him being 210 pounds, which is what he weighed in at the combine. Uh, the irony to that is I just went off a list of about, I don't know, 14 different quarterbacks in the NFL that are somewhere between 207 pounds and 220 pounds. Jane Daniels has the type of frame to pull on more body mass. I think he'll be fine if a lot of these other starting quarterbacks we're talking about uh, in the league who are somewhere in that ballpark or about the same size. I'm not sure why there's such a big concern. With Drake May, I understand where Danny's coming from. Two years ago, he had great film. This past season was not that. He really struggled with consistency at times. I understand the argument made. He didn't have playmakers. I understand the argument you can make about UNC's defense being awful. But at the end of the day, there were still some poor decisions that were made, some inconsistencies in his accuracy. And I think those are going to continue to be concerns because he's most likely going to a team that's going to be devoid of talent out around him, especially when you're talking about getting picked in the top five of the draft. So you guys have those two flipped. So Brady likes May at three to go to New England. Danny going with Daniels there. All right, we're going to move on to the wide receiver position. You both have at the number four pick, the Cardinals, trying to beef off, beef up their offensive weapons. All right, so Danny, you are going with Malik Neighbors. Brady, why do you have Marvin Harrison Jr. in that slot above him? I think he's the best overall prospect in this class when you look at his size and ability and, and the pro potentially the fit for Arizona being a true number one wide receiver. I just think he really is the definition of that when you, he checks all the boxes of what you're, you're looking for. And that's not to take away from Malik Neighbors. I think Malik Neighbors could eventually have a better NFL career, especially if he falls into a circumstance where he's going to be paired up with a quarterback like Justin Herbert, who we know can sling around the football. And Neighbors does, does have the ability to catch not only the, the quick screens, the intermediate passes but also downfield that is quite a big of a frame but he's gonna be incredibly effective too so I could see where you put Malik neighbors before Marvin Harrison jr. but I think as far as a fit for Arizona and what they're looking for specifically as a number one wide receiver Marvin Harrison jr. fits the bill to me 
Yeah, I, again, Jenny, very, I think these, these margins are really tight. I mean, that's when you look at both of these. They're both incredibly talented. But I'm going to give the edge slightly to Malik Neighbors just because of the style of play. I mean, I think he is absolutely lightning in a bottle. Those yards after a catch, he gets the ball in his football hands, instantly becomes a weapon with it. Whereas Marvin Harrison Jr., I think, is a little bit more straight line, uh, a little bit more straightforward, not quite as explosive off the line of scrimmage. We still don't know what his 40 time is. It didn't. It's not like it's an issue. I also am a little bit more old school. I like somebody who has that competitive edge on their shoulder, not somebody who's looking to change the game and won't work out, won't do the medicals, doesn't have a pro day because they're trying to change it. I want somebody to come in a little bit hungrier. So I'm going to go Malik uh, Neighbors with a slight edge over Marvin Harrison Jr. A little personal there. I don't know. Uh, once again, you guys have those picks flip-flopped four and five, one right after another. So up next, we're going to talk Brock Bowers. One inside the top 10, one outside. So Brady, you have the Georgia Star going at 12 to Denver. Danny, why do you like him at 7 to Tennessee? You know, he's one of those players, I think there's a pretty wide variance of where I think see, see him projected to go. But when I look at Tennessee and a quarterback like Will Levis, who they're trying to, you know, make the quarterback of their future, I think a tight end is a best friend of a young quarterback. And I think Brock Bowers, you know, sure, there's some question marks. Is he big enough? Does he have the prototypical size of some guys like Travis Kelsey or even Rob Gronkowski, some of the greater, you know, tight ends of the game? He's a little bit smaller than them, doesn't do quite as much blocking on the line of scrimmage. But as a weapon, as a receiver, which is where the NFL is going and has been going. He's about as dynamic as they get. I mean, Georgia used him in the backfield. They do speed sweeps with him. They found ways to get ball, the ball in his hands uh, as much as and as early and as often as possible. I think he's an absolute weapon. So I don't know if he goes this high, but man, if I was Will Levis, I would be absolutely celebrating this pick for somebody I could find and make me look really good as a QB. I think it makes a lot of sense, too, if the Tennessee Titans didn't struggle so much with their protection last year. So it's one of the reasons why I've got them taking a left tackle, the first left tackle off the board, Joel, out of Notre Dame. And instead, I've got Brock Bowers going to Denver, where you don't have quite as big of a concerns about their protection. Granted, they need a quarterback. You could probably make the case uh, that they would go for a quarterback there at number 12. But Brock Bowers is one of those game-changing type players. I think you put him on the inside take some of the pressure off the outside wide receivers uh, in, within a Sean Payton offense, and we're capable of seeing what he's able to do in the variety of ways they move him around. Not saying uh, you're talking about like Taysom Hill-esque, but I go back to Sean Payton's days in New Orleans having a Swiss Army knife like that, and Brock Bowers has the ability to do that. He has the ability to be on the backside of runs and boots and still be able to split out wide and do things downfield. And so I think that sort of creativity bodes well and fits well with what Sean Payton's looking to do in Denver. Bowers with the most career receptions, most receiving yards, most receiving touchdowns by a tight end in SEC history. He is sure to add, you know, some skill and talent to these NFL teams. Another player that you guys disagree on, shocking, Michael Penix Jr. So, Danny, you have him outside the top 20. Brady, you have him 13th to the Raiders. Why? Well, they need a quarterback. I mean, bottom line is Aiden O'Connell was a rookie last year. Uh, I think you're going into this year either with him or Gardner Minshew. Is that really what Antonio Pierce wants? If you look at the, uh, the contract that Gardner Minshew signed, it more looks to be a backup contract. So they're not going to over or hourly advertise it. But uh, at this point in the mock draft that I did, you've already had four quarterbacks taken off the board. Michael Penix is the next one in my mind that makes the most sense. His film during his two years of Washington was incredible, in particular with the downfield accuracy. Uh, I don't see many holes in his game. People have talked about some of the, the short, shallow passing and accuracies there. I don't see it. And any questions about his mobility, people probably haven't dug into the fact that he was a really good athlete during his time at Indiana. He did suffer a number of injuries. Maybe that's a concern that Danny and some other people have, but I'm not a doctor and I don't have that medical information. So if I'm just basing it off the tape, he'd be a good fit. Makes a lot of sense for the Las Vegas Raiders. I'll just be clear. I love Michael Penix. Like if, if it was my, you know, choice, I'd pick him, you know, right where Brady has him. I just wonder if he actually goes there. We weren't allowed to do trades, but I could see a scenario where even the Raiders, if they're looking at those four top quarterbacks gone and they could trade down, knowing that a lot of those uh, teams that are very, you know, quarterback needy have already gone off the board and they can do it, you know, have a little bit more relaxed attitude. Say hey, we can wait and get him later and get some more assets. I could see them trading down. I just feel like Penix is one of those quarterbacks we could either see a team trading up into the first round to get, you know, that 31, 32 pick uh, to get the extra year, or you could see a team like the Raiders straight down to get them. But I absolutely love the film on Michael Penix Jr. It is off the charts. I think he was the best deep ball thrower of this class. 
I thought he did a great job, like IQ, protection-wise, directing traffic up front. It's a big reason why they hardly gave up any sacks. Yes, they had a great offensive line, but he knew where protection was going, knew when to get rid of the football fast. I think he's sensational. And I also do think, I, yeah, I'm not a doctor either. I do think those injuries scare the teams from taking him this high. So we'll have to see, but I love the film on Michael Penix for sure. You guys weren't allowed to do trades? Who came up with these nah, rules? Talk to Jack. Producer to Jack, Jack, what are you doing? That's yeah. not how you do a mock draft. <laughs> All right, finish off this dueling mock. We're going to look at Leatu Latu there. Most sacks and second most tackles for loss in college football in the past two seasons. Danny, you got him 19th going to the Rams. Brady, not even in the first round? What's going on? So I think this is very similar. I mean, this is the defensive version of Michael Penix Jr. He's, you know, he almost had to retire from the sport because of a neck injury that he had at Washington. Then he had to get cleared to come back. I think this really does scare a lot of teams with Leitu Latu. But I think his film may be better than ever some of the other edge rushers that are coming up that are going to go in front of him because of the injury issues. But I think he's probably the most NFL ready out of any of them. I think he could be sensational, but I do think there is a significant risk with the injury history that he's got. Yeah, I'm going to speak more on the fact that in my mock, I mean, the reality is you're going to have guys who get left out that you go back and look and go, man, you could have made a case for Latu going uh, later on in this draft as one of the top edge rushers. And clearly his film showcases that. He's, he's one of the more... I guess seasoned edge rushers in regards to the variety of moves that he uses. He was incredibly productive during his time at UCLA. So, uh, look, I find it even hard pressed when we do these mock drafts. You wish you have more than just one crack at it uh, to put him as part of that. But him, Brian Thomas Jr., who I think will be a first round pick, I didn't have part of it in this version of the mock draft that I did. Uh, but he very well could be a first round pick. You know, as comparing picks with the Los Angeles Rams, I want another interior defensive player. Uh, in this particular case, Byron Murphy uh, out of Texas, who I feel like would be a nice replacement to what they're losing in Aaron Donald. Thought that kind of makes more sense. I think there's a pretty big drop off after Murphy and Johnny Newton in the D tackle class to the rest of the group. And, and with Latsu, I think there's a there's a number of other edge rushers that, like in this case, I had Chop Robinson, for example, uh, going to the Detroit Lions. It very easily could be Latsu, uh, you know, going in that spot instead. So. Uh, I think he's a first-round talent. It's just you only got 32 of the picks to be made. Sometimes we do these different mocks where different guys get left off that you want to try to find a different fit for. The NFL Draft, two weeks from today. We'll see which one of you had the better mock. Don't go anywhere, fellas. we got much more to come from you. But to continue this conversation, check out the With the First Pick podcast by Ryan Wilson and Rick Spielman. They have been dishing out NFL Draft comps for the past few weeks. Their latest pod, looking at the next version of some 2023 NFL Draft.